In this video, we're going to take a look at the Use Reducer hook. In my opinion, the Use Reducer hook is one of the most underrated hooks. Use Reducer allows you to create a mini state machine inside of your React application. So I'm going to start off with a very basic example, and then we're going to move on to something a little bit more complicated. So I have this simple React application here, and I'm first going to say const, and I'm going to open up an array bracket here, and I'm going to say equals Use Reducer. Use reducer is going to return state, and it's also going to return a dispatch function. So I'm going to say dispatch. Now to call use reducer, we need a reducer, and we also need some initial state. So I'm going to define my initial state. My initial state is going to have a count, and the count is just going to default to zero. Next, I need to define my reducer. So I'm going to say function reducer. A reducer takes our state, and it also takes an action. Now I can type my state here as type of initial state. So now we can see state is an object with a count, and a count is a number. And my action is going to be either increment or decrement. or reset. Now a reducer needs to return a new version of state. So I can easily use this switch case here. So you can see that we're going to switch on the action. And if the case is increment, we're going to increment count by one. If it's decrement, we're going to decrement count by one. If it's reset, we're just going to return our initial state. So count will be zero. Otherwise we're going to throw an error. So you can use a switch statement. However, I'm going to use an if statement just for something a little bit different. So I'm going to say if action is equal to increment, then I want to return count is equal to state.count plus one. Otherwise, if action is equal to decrement, then I want to decrement my state count by one. If action is equal to reset, then I just want to return my count back to zero. I could also just return initial state here. Otherwise, I'm just going to throw a new error that says invalid action. Okay, now we can go use our state and our dispatch functions here. So the first thing I want to do is to display my count. So I'm going to say state dot count. Next, I want to have a button. This button is going to have a plus symbol. And I'm going to give it an onClick handler. The onClick handler is going to take a function. The function is going to call dispatch. And the type is going to be increment. I want to copy this button down. I want to have one that says decrement. I'm going to give this a minus symbol. And then I'm going to say reset. And then the action on the reset button is going to be reset. So let's have a look at what our application looks like. We have a plus button, a minus symbol, and a reset button. If we click plus, our incrementer gets incremented. If we click minus, it gets minus. And then we can reset it back to zero. Let's go through what we're doing here. And then we're going to move on to a more complicated example. So we're using reducer. Reducer returns an array. The zeroth element is going to be our state, which is going to be initialized as our initial state here. And we also get a dispatch function, and we're calling dispatch with just a string here. You're going to see later on in the next example that you can also put a payload inside of this dispatch function here. So I'm going to make a shopping list where you can increment items in a cart, and you can also remove an item from a cart. I'm just going to import from this products JSON here. So I'm going to import products from products.json. You say export default function shop. And inside of shop, I'm just going to return a div for now and a h1 that says shop. Next, I'm going to say const 
I'm going to open up the array brackets, and then this is going to be equal to use reducer. Reducer is going to take our reducer function here, and it's also going to take an initial state. Okay, so let's set up our initial state. So I want to say const initial state is equal to an object, but I just want to generate my object from my products here. So I'm going to say is equal to products.reduce. And then I want this to return a new object. I'm going to get my accumulator and I'm going to get my current value. I need to return my accumulator. And I want to say accumulator current.id. And our ID is going to exist here. And I want to cast this to a string. And then this is just going to be equal to zero. So our payload here is going to look something like this. We're going to have an ID and then we're going to have a number and the number represents how many items with that ID are currently in the cart. Okay, so we need to type this out. So I'm going to type my returned object here. I'm going to say as record and the key is going to be a string and then the value is going to be a number. The next thing I need to do is to define the reducer function. So I'm going to say function reducer. Reducer is going to take a state, and this is the current state of our reducer. And it's also going to take an action. So I'm going to type state as type of initial state. So we can see now that state is going to be a record with a key that's a string and a value that's a number. And then we're going to have our action. And I'm going to type action as an object. We're going to have a type here. And our type is going to be add or subtract. And then we're going to have a payload. And our payload is just going to have a product ID. And our product ID is going to be a string. Okay, so let's now destructure our state and our dispatch. And before we go on to use our state and dispatch, let's currently map through our product and display them on the screen. So I'm going to say products.map. I'm just going to return a line item. And then the key is just going to be our product. Dot ID. And then I want us to display the product dot title. And also inside of this line item, I want to have a state. I'm going to get my product dot ID. And I want to have a button. This button is going to add items to our cart. And then I want to have another button that's going to remove the item from the cart. I'm going to say on click is equal to a function. This function is going to return dispatch. Inside of dispatch, we're going to say the type is add. And the payload is going to have a product ID, which is going to be our product.id. We're casting this back to a string because up here, we said that our product ID is a string. Now let's copy this on click handler and I'm going to put this on our decrement and then I'm going to say this is subtract. Let's go over to the page, so slash shop. And we're not displaying any items here and that is because from my map, I need to return the list item. Okay, so now we have the item name and we can increment it and we can decrement it except our reducer returns undefined. So let's go fill in our reducer. So I want to have my default case here, and this is going to be throw new error invalid action. Next, I'm going to say if action.type is equal to add, and we get TypeScript helpers here because we've typed the type up here as add or subtract. So if you put in here, Bob, you'll see that this doesn't work. This needs to be add. And now we need to return a new version of our state. So I'm going to return, and then I'm going to spread state on. And the next thing I need to do is to get the product out of the payload and then increment it by one. So you can see here I have action.payload.productID. And then we're going to get that product out of our current state, and then we're going to increment it by one. Let's do the same for decrement. So I'm going to say, if type is subtract, then we're going to return a new object. We're going to spread state. And then we're going to decrement the current counter by one. Now, the issue with this is we can go into negatives. So I'm going to say on here, math 
dot max. And then I'm going to say the max is zero. So this is going to get the max amount. So if this tries to go back into negative numbers, then zero is going to be higher and it's going to stay at zero. Let's go back over and we can click plus. Now we can click minus and you can see that it doesn't go any lower than zero. The reason we get this number here is because down below, we're printing it out with state and then we're getting it out of the state with the product ID. So that is how to use useReducer. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below how you like to use useReducer. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.